tribe of names simon speaking and welcome to a very warm very unusually warm november day here in sunny philadelphia and today we're asking the question what do you do if you want to record music on a budget well let's talk about that shall we It is lovely out there, absolutely fantastic. So, writing and recording music. It has never been easier to gain access to the techniques and equipment to make good music these days. Um, and without sounding too much like a grandpa, but I'm going to, um, when I first started, uh, the only way you could really write um, music was you know, at home, and you either had a cassette player to record your ideas in down, and I actually still have a whole load of demos on cassette up here, um, and recording them, you kind of had to go to a studio, and that was a lot of money. And one of my pet theories is that there were a lot more bands back in those days because you had to be in a band because if you could pull your resources, you could get into a studio and afford to pay for it. Um, doesn't seem to be the case nowadays. You can get one or two person bands and uh, you can record quite fine on today's technology. And speaking of today's technology, um, recording music on a budget really has um, a limitless amount of options these days. Um, and the first real destination you can uh, uh, head towards is your phone. Or a tablet, uh, you know. I uh, I, I f often use my iPhone to record ideas, either uh, with a little multi-track app, or uh, sometimes, well, most of the time, actually, just using the uh, the recorder that's built into it, uh, just to get ideas down. Um, and it's a great little jotting tool, and they even actually now have um, an ability for you to use like a faux bass and a faux drum track that will follow along with your playing. And obviously, I'm referring to playing guitars at the moment because that's my ballpark. Um, but if you want to go a little bit more involved into it, especially when it comes to uh, phones, um, starting off with an iPhone, which is what I use, um, GarageBand, everybody knows GarageBand nowadays, um, it's a fantastic tool and I've noticed over the years that it's becoming more and more like its bigger brother, Logic Pro X, in its look and feel, which for me is great because uh, there's no disparity between the user inf interface or at least less disparity um, in the user interface now between what I use on my phone or when I'm going away on my tablet um, as opposed to what I have here on my studio computer. Now, if you're using um, uh, Android, I have less experience with Android, but I'm told that one of the better um, you, apps you can use on both uh, tablets and phones is, is FL Studio. And um, I think you can try the FL Studio. You can, you can download the FL Studio uh, for Android for less than 20 bucks. Um, and uh, but, oh, by the way, I, what I'll do is I'll put links to all of the uh, things that I mentioned in the comments below. So you can have a closer look in your own time. Uh, but for like 20 bucks, a multi-track recorder, you can't really say no for that. Um, with regards to using uh, laptops uh, and, uh, and you know, desktop computers, um, you really have a huge range of options. Um, and um, I think the one, certainly when it comes to PCs, that sits right at the top of the pile and has a, a huge cult following, uh, following is um, is Reaper, a DAW called Reaper. By the way, just if you don't know what the DAW stands for and everybody's saying it, it's Digital Audio Workstation. Again, I'll put a link down in the description below so you can get a, a proper Wikipedia uh, definition of, of what it means. But um, yeah, Reaper is the, uh, is, is the one that I hear an awful lot about um, with regards to um, freeware or freemium um, software uh, that will allow you access to uh, multi-track recording it's it's got a great it's got a massive following actually a, a, almost a cult-like following and uh, you can download it for free and it gives you a 60-day evaluation copy you get what's known as a nag screen that comes up uh, and that is basically a little screen before you can do anything that says buy the license 
But once you dismiss that, you could, you know, Reaper has full functional uh, functionality. The software is not hobbled in any way, and you can use it um, uh, to its fullest capabilities. Um, for me, of course, I use a Mac. I used to use. Um, Pro Tools on on uh, a PC for years, but I don't think at the time when I was using it back in the uh, the late two thousand uh, the late two thousand nine I think it was I was really starting to use it use it in earnest. It still wasn't a uh, uh, a particularly good bit of software on on PC and it crashed an awful lot. So much so that I actually did move specifically to Macs um, because I wanted a stable platform. Uh, and in using Max, uh, I started using Logic Pro X, um, and uh, for 199 bucks, um, that might sound expensive, but for what you get, it's incredible value for money. I think it's like a third of the price of, of like something like um, uh, Reason or, or Ableton or, or even Pro Tools. Although I do believe they do have cut down versions of that to introduce you to the interface. So they're worth checking out as well. And again, I'll stick links down in the uh, below so you can check those out for yourself. Um, when it comes to um, what they call doorless uh, recording, uh, this is something which I have much less experience with. Um, but... Um, I um, I would recommend going with something um, uh, on the second-hand market, especially if you're going to be using a lot of guitars, a lot of traditional rock and indie and acoustic kind of music. Uh, Reverb.com is a great place to go to, to see if you can find decent second-hand recording equipment like 8-track recorders and even 4-track recorders. Um, I owned... For years, um, a Roland VS840, which is a, an eight-track recorder, which recorded to zip disks, and I still have all the zip disks lying around here somewhere. But um, the VS840 was a godsend for me. It was an eight-track recorder. Uh, it was fully digital. The interface was a bit problematic. It wasn't the easiest to get, but you can pick one of those up now. I saw one on Reverb.com when I was researching uh, this uh, particular episode. For 99 bucks, um, you know, 99 bucks for an 8-track digital recorder, that's excellent. That's amazing value for money. If you really want to go the lo-fi route, you can still buy 4-track recorders on Reverb.com secondhand. In fact, actually this, this was lent to me by a friend of mine from New York. So I could transfer a lot of my old 4-track recordings onto disc. When it comes to recording with a laptop or a, or a desktop computer, there are lots of ways you can um, get your creativity into the digital domain. The one thing you'll probably need above anything else is an I.O. box, a uh, breakout box, which is the thing you can attach all of your audio devices in and it will convert it into digital signal, which can then be recorded by com your computer. They're very cheap. In fact, you can build, pick up one of these little ones for, for less than a hundred bucks these days, even brand new. This is an old Focusrite uh, one, which I've had lying around for ages. And these are really good for sort of recording stuff on the go if you've got your laptop and you're not in the studio. When it comes to uh, you know, other sort of like more direct ways of recording, uh, Zoom, the company Zoom, uh, produced the Zoom H6, which is a, I think a, a six track recorder, audio recorder, so you can multi-track on that. So it's great for getting ideas down. And of course, if you like that lo-fi aesthetic, that kind of um, Bon Iver um, aesthetic of uh, very sort of like man in a cabin or person in a cabin, I should say, uh, kind of feel, that probably will do you because it's actually got um, a built-in uh, microphone as well uh, on top of the recorder. And uh, actually, I kind of fancy the idea of doing that myself. Maybe I'll get myself a zoom h6 at some point so there are lots of options available out there when it comes to sort of doorless synth playing i know practically nothing about that i might do a separate episode on, on that once i've done some more research because that element of it also interests me um, and i quite fancy the idea of getting into that maybe i'll do an episode entirely dedicated to uh, doorless synth stuff at some point in the near future and finally to sum up if you have an overwhelming desire to to make music, you will find a way to commit that creativity to tape 
or to hard drive or to SSD. Um, there's never been a better time to achieve great results with the modern tech that you have available. You have more quality sounds and features and storage in your phone than the Beatles had when they were making Sgt. Peppers and maybe even when Pink Floyd had, uh, you know, was making Dark Side of the Moon. Uh, so it really all comes down to creativity. And just remember, gear is there to serve your creativity. It's not an end unto itself, certainly from my perspective. Uh, and it certainly won't write the music for you, at least not yet. So there you have it. Recording on a budget is easier these days than ever before. And it's only ever going to get easier as far as I'm concerned. So I hope you found this episode interesting. And uh, until we speak again, Tribe of Names, this is Simon Godfrey saying... Have a good week. Goodbye.